the players are willing to risk a lockout to stop the push for an NBA hard cap. So the NBA is pushing for a hard cap as part of its next CBA negotiations, which is best described instead of as an upper spending limit. There will be a lockout before there's a hard cap, said one source from the player side to uh, Mark Stein. Mark Stein can be a little bit of an inconsistent uh, source, I would say, at times. Uh, so again, take his stuff with a grain of salt. We're just reporting it because I think it's very interesting. Um, but here are some things that this is uh, also what he has to say. Sources say there's a strong desire from within the league to limit the overall spending uh, while the value of the individual contracts continues to climb due to another influx of television money. Uh, the league's current system is built around a salary cap and a luxury tax. Um, the two sides have until December 15th to kind of decide whether or not they're going to opt out and would terminate the agreement on June 30th, 2023. Um, Brad, why don't I just start with you first? I know that you were a big, uh, it was a big no-no for you uh, for the hard cap, but I just kind of want to get your perspective. I mean, I want to get all perspectives of it, so we'll also talk about it from the owner side as well. Uh, but Brad, why don't you start off first with it? I mean, what do you think about this hard cap? Per, uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, uh, from from the player side, it's like you know you're not getting what you're worth if there's a hard cap. So I don't understand why they would ever go for that. And I heard CJ McCollum was ready to unionize and like battle battle it immediately. And good for him because an example of this is like CJ McCollum or not CJ Andrew Wiggins. You know, yeah. Andrew Wiggins was available and he was free on the market for anybody to grab you know, or trade for, you know, but mm -hmm. owners and players around the league had this stigma around him that he wasn't very good. You know, the mm -hmm. Warriors took a chance on him, helped put him in their system. He looked good and then they paid him. How can you want a hard cap for that and be mad at, you know, the Warriors keeping a player that they took a chance on and paying him like he deserves? So mm -hmm. I don't, from the player's perspective, I don't like that because players should be paid what they're worth. Right. And owners need to get their money. Well, and, and going on top of that, Brad, too, like the thing that is, I think, the, the most important from the player side of things is that it, it hurts both like the low end and the high end. Like and nobody, nobody wins from changing it because realistically, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. it, it, really more than anything, like if if one thing with one group of people is going to hurt the most, it's like these low end guys. Right. Like the role players, like the five or the excuse me, like the six through 12s on most teams are going to be really hurt from that just because the, the top end players are going to get their money no matter what. They're not, they're not going to get affected by that. It's more just a matter of now we need to find people who are going to take the biggest pay cut to get on the team with them, right? Mm -hmm. But they don't even want it because then it breaks up the, uh, the super team monopoly that we live in, right? Like these guys want to play with each other. They don't want, to, they don't want rules that are going to limit being able to play with their friends or being able to play with the top, like the, the highest end of player that they can. So I was, I was more trying to think like, who would this actually be the biggest benefit for who's trying to push this within the NBA? That was something I was thinking about. I think it might be small market teams. That's probably the only group of people I can think that would want this. Like the, yeah. the teams that don't have a huge bankroll and yeah. just can't compete. But at the same time, like, I don't know, get your bread up, like start competing. That's, that's what it exactly. is. Exactly. Yeah. Draft, draft better, do something. I, exactly. I don't know. I, yeah. That, that's poor logic. Like at, at a certain point you have to stop making excuses and understand like if you're an OKC, you're an OKC. Like you want a team there. That's people don't want to live there. So you have to do things that make it intriguing to other people, you know, incentivize it in other ways. So just be, just be better is really what it comes down to. Stop worrying about the money. Yeah, I mean, I think from, you know, from all this stuff, I think I do agree with you guys in, in generality of just like, you know, at the end of the day, it's whoever spends the most money. We obviously know the Golden State Warriors owners really willing to spend all the money and all the bread just to keep this team intact. I mean, I mean, to be honest with you, I think he's kind of having a decision to make right now currently Then we can talk about that a little bit later down the line. But, you know, obviously with Clay Thompson and his contract situation and then, of course, the big one, Draymond Green. Um, and kind of figuring out, is he worth paying the money for it and other things like that? And so I think at the end of the day, I think, like you said, the owners are really trying to push this fair and balanced thing, which is the smaller markets have an opportunity to compete with the bigger markets and kind of just limit like Jacob Lehman from like having, instead of spending like, you know, $500 billion or however much he's spending, 500 million, excuse me, dollars for like his team plus luxury tax. It's like, okay, well, let's limit it now to, 
300 million and everyone gets 300 million across the boards but i do agree with you from that sense i think it would hurt the the lower players i mean they'd have to present something to us to where we could either agree or disagree with the implement implementation how they uh implicate it in terms of just you know is it going to be fair and balanced to the to the guys you know like you like you said pete from six to twelve because that's also the worry too is that you know those those lower guys are not going to get their bread um which is kind of why I was open, and I know you guys may disagree with it, but I was really for no salary cap and just kind of let the market dictate itself. I just think that that would be a little bit of a better option for me. I think that by having it open, you can pay the players, you know, what you think they're worth, but it's enough to where like you're not you're not capped by a salary cap or a luxury tax. Um, yeah, and I don't know. I think that's where you get to the flip side of the problem. Like that's just the inverse. Then you ha- then you really do have super teams i mean like think of, like look at the clippers right now i mean the clippers have the, the biggest bankroll in the nba i believe other than the warriors steve Ballmer has like more money than most of the owners in the nba combined like literally i think he has a hundred and a hundred billion dollars like that he could spend and he's shown time and time again that he would spend so I mean, if you got rid of the hard cap, there are dudes like that. I'm telling you, they would put out a squad of like five all NBA dudes. They really would. So yeah, I I would push. I would rather a hard cap than no cap. Personally, that's just me. I think the the most important part of any of this is competitive balance. That is the most important thing to the NBA. I think you look at like, you know, Bernie. I know you're a big Premier League soccer fan, like I am. I don't watch it as much as I used to. And one of the main reasons that I don't watch english soccer anymore is because of how how unbalanced the league is because there is no cap to these teams like you have these squads that have 11 of the best players like they would have a, the best player on any team in the league but they have 11 of them basically so mm. i i don't know I, w- I wouldn't like that i would probably stop watching like if we got a team that was like kevin durant lebron steph and whoever right it's over what are you doing to that yeah I mean, I think at the end of the day, I think the players kind of like the way the things the, the way things are right now. Obviously, with that being, um, you know, luxury tax to kind of pen- I maybe mean, not penalize, but to like incentivize teams to hey, you know, if you want to win, you got you got to spend a little bit extra, and you know, it, it costs a little bit more money to do it. Um, but I still think at the end of the day, the the biggest thing for this whole situation is going to be. You know, the owners, I think the owners are really going to push back this time around because of maybe not because of this whole situation, but because of the whole rest management things, the whole, you know, the Ben Simmons. Like, I don't want to, like, pin this all on Ben Simmons because it's not on him, but like guys like James Harden, for example, sure. who, who sat out. I think that this is going to be the first time in a while where I've seen, you know, the NBA owners usually are willing to give. But this is going to be the first time, I think, in a, in a minute where the owners are actually going to say, well, hold up, wait a minute. Like, I, I kind of want some stuff for myself now. And uh, this is going to be a very interesting battle if there is a if there is a lockout and, you know, what's going to happen for that. Yeah, I agree with you. I was actually – oh, sorry, sorry, Brad. You go ahead. You go ahead. Oh, you good. Uh, I was going to say, from the owner's perspective, I just don't think that they're willing to, like, face a lockout because, I mean, that's my opinion, but, like, I just don't – because they would stand to lose so much money, especially with all the influx of talent in the NBA that just keeps on pouring in. I feel like they're better off meeting the players somewhere. And like honestly, why should the NBA, like, like I get it, these people own the teams, but why should the NBA, you know, cater to the billionaires? You know, like these guys are billionaires. They can, they have avenues and ways to get their bread up and to hire people who can draft correctly and make their teams interesting and fun. You know, like the Orlando Magic suck, but they're fun and they're drawing in money. Yeah, I mean, they got the number one pick, but I just don't understand siding with billionaires on that one. Like, you guys just either get your money up or draft better and put better teams together. Well, see, this is where I would like – I've been thinking about this this upcoming contract, you know, negotiation they're going to have. Like, this might be the messiest one that we've we've lived through. Like, our group of fans, like, in, the, in our 20s, late 20s, I think we're probably all, like, 27, 28, right? Like – We've seen we when was the we saw a lockout right when was that? That was 2011. 11, yeah. 2011. I, I yeah. see. The problem is I don't know if we're gonna actually get a lockout, but I do agree with you, Bernie. Like I think there are some huge issues that the these billionaires are not just gonna go go according to plan with all the players. Like yeah. there's been so many huge influxes of 
things that have not really gone the owner's way and then mm-hmm. they just allowed it to slide with these guys and then it didn't go their way either right so then by giving up that control like you know i i don't want to get too deep into the net situation currently going on mm-hmm. but they're a great example like joe Sai let Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving have so much control that when they started to blow it up and ruin everything for the Nets, it was very hard for him to reel it back in and control what's going on. He can't control it. It's over. Like he, they, they have to figure out how to get get out of that situation. Whether it's Steve Nash, whether it's all the players, whatever it is. Kyrie to LA. It's, it's so out of control <laughs> that I think you have to think like. These teams are all looking at it. These owners are like, God, I don't mm-hmm. want to be Joe Psy right now. I don't want to be in that spot. So I don't know because it's not just rest management. It's just the yeah this influx of players who think they have the the power and not only think they do have the power to you know mm-hmm. influence roster changes. Like that used to be just LeBron. That was where the joke came from. That it was LeBron that would would do that. The there, there's there's five to ten dudes in the NBA that do that now, and it's only going to keep growing the longer that the owners let that power slide. So I don't think they're going to just let it go like willy nilly. Like, hey, we're we're done with it. You know, players take over. Let's see what you could do. I think they're going to try and get some of that back and see what they can do. But yeah. I don't know. I've, I, the NBA is in for a messy spot. I actually think they need to stop with all these crazy changes and focus on just making sure everybody's okay for now. You know, like yeah. stop. Stop introducing, you know, hard caps. Stop introducing, you know, this tournament, that tournament. Like, slow down. Like, your your product isn't broken. People like your product. More people watch it every season. I just read that the Suns and Warriors game had yeah. two point three two million viewers Not from last year. Like that, that's crazy, right? What are we What are we so worried about changing everything for? If it's not broke, you don't need to fix every single little thing. So. Man, I, I'm tired of all the changes being pro- pr- uh, proposed. If maybe that's my, like my little swerve. Stop, stop with the new rules. Like, let's just have fun and watch basketball. Maybe. Um, yeah, I mean, I think at the end of the day, that they, they look at the NFL, they look at these other leagues, and I, I know that they're supposed to be different leagues, but I think that they kind of want some of that. I think they want some of that power back. Sure. And I think th- to Brad's point a little bit, you know, why don't the billionaires just kind of you know, let it be on. And I think Brad, it's really just because of their egos. It's yeah. just like anything in life. You know, if you, if you're, you know, the boss or the CEO of something or the coach, right. And your players are like, no, we want to run our own plays. We don't want to run what the coaches run. Then the coach is going to be like, what the heck? And then it just becomes a whole butting heads. No, no sort of compromise. And I think that's kind of where I'm, where I'm scared the league and the players and the owners are going to head to is, they're really going to butt heads, and I think it's going to be a, a bigger lockout than people think. Um, and again, I, I'd be curious to see if they do kind of what the NFL did years back where they had replacement players and whether they just do a replacement player thing because I think at the end of the day, they want to they, they'll want to make the money. They, they're not going to want to wait for these players. I mean, it's possible I mean, now with the way... Have, the, like, the My thing is, if you have like... I, I get the, yeah, I mean, they have giant egos and that's what made them billionaires, but same with like the NBA players, you know, like yeah. they have enormous egos and once historically, once you give out power, it's kind of really hard to take it back. You yeah. know, like these players have a taste of their power now. Like we remember the David Stern league, like yeah. how it was with an iron fist, you know, and now they have powers. So I just don't see it being able to like, it's either meet at a common ground that is probably given to you by the players since they are your product, you know, like, the players are the league, you know, so the owners can mm-hmm. have their egos and their wills and wants, but players can point to like Bernie, like you said, the Ben Simmons situation that was messed up. And it's probably going to be a huge talking point for owners in the next CBA contract negotiations, but that's not the norm. You know, Ben Simmons was, yeah, he, you know, that was a anomaly and he was like a top mm-hmm. 25 player. If you want to say that not too many people have that kind of pull, you know? So yeah, I just I just don't see like players generate the revenue, you know. So and that's mm-hmm. what happened with the last lockout. They had to reach an agreement because they wanted to get the players back. Even if they did replacement players, if you have someone as good as like Brandon Ingram sitting out because he wants to stand for his guys and whatnot, you know, and then it just snowballs mm-hmm. like people keep sitting out. You can't put out 
David Stockton and expect people to watch and make money. You know? <laughs> like, you're, tell, you're telling me people aren't going to show up for Leangelo Ball when he takes over for Lamelo? He's going to be so the, exactly. exactly. the scab replacement. <laughs> oh my god! You can Maybe still wear your L Ball jersey. Some exactly. Yeah. Some hard triple B fans doing double duty. Yeah, I'll, I'll take I'll take some Lofton. I want to watch some Lofton. Get him out there on the court. I mean, too. He I would love to either, see him out there. <laughs> You should be playing. Right? I know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's tough, man. I, I, I think it really what it's going to come down to is what are the concessions on both sides? I really, truly think it's going to come down to this. There's going to be a lot more money to hand out. Yes. I think it's going to boil down to, hey, you guys need to stop with all the – we need to, you know, reel in just a little bit of the player empowerment. You guys, you know, making decisions in front offices, th things like that. Here's more money, right? There's a there's a whole bunch of it coming into the league. This is how everybody's happy, right? Players get paid more. Everybody ends up winning in that situation. And, then, and really, that's what it boils down to. Because if they can get the games back on with this new CBA, you know, television bargaining agreement, all the stuff that's going to happen in the next few, few seasons for this league. Mm -hmm. And we haven't even had a chance. I mean, this is our first stream since, you know, the season has started. But we didn't get a chance to talk about something that, not only is it awesome, but I think it's really interesting is the fact that the NBA uh, League Pass is doing all these Wembenyama games. Yeah. Like every single I one. I love it. Because not only is it important just for, like, you can look at it on the, the micro scale of, wow, this is crazy. This one dude is this popular already. They want to see him. It's more interesting that the NBA is turning itself into a competitive, like, streaming service like Netflix mm -hmm. or you know, Hulu or Amazon Prime, they want to have as much content on the NBA app as possible, right? Yeah, That's all mm -hmm. leading into just like this, this revolution of we want to have as much NBA on in your house as possible. So uh -huh. in that sense, I agree with you, Brad, like they don't want to miss games. They're not going to want to miss games, especially once that stuff starts rolling downhill, like they're, they're going to want to keep it moving. So mm -hmm. the balance is going to be interesting. But it's really just going to boil down to more money for everybody. And then everybody's going to be happy. Everybody yeah. makes more money. Exactly. Yeah. Winners all around. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a very interesting situation to kind of monitor, continue to look at. Um, and I do agree with you there, Pete. I think the more that the NBA app can kind of grow and develop, and you can clearly see it's a it's a global game at this point, and oh, yeah. you're, trying to, you're trying to get as many people in there as you can. Obviously, we have some great ideas for it. I know that the NBA is looking at maybe adding Discord um and maybe kind of doing like a twitch situation where like you have the discord up on the on the side while you're watching the game and you can just chat with people uh from around the world about the game you know let's say it's pelicans versus heat you can just talk talk about like whether cj mccollum you know he missed that jumper all you know you know smack talk and things like that i mean i think there's some great ideas that the nba can go down um that's a little bit different from the nfl i think the nfl kind of has more of the older fans where I feel like the NBA kind of has the, the younger millennials to Gen Z uh, fans and they're continuing to grow that, which I'm very appreciative of, um, especially someone that's, you know, all three of us have been fans since a very long time. We love basketball. We've, we've all played it. Um, and I just think that it's going to be one of those things where it continues to grow with this younger generation. Um, and I do agree with you there. I don't think they want to miss anything, but, you know, great things have been ruined by big egos before from both sides so I, I think that this is going to be one of those things we're going to have to monitor and see but uh people out there in the comment section let us know in the comment section down below or people that are watching this later on as an individual clip let us know what you guys think about this this is going to be very fun and also stressful if you're part of this whole negotiation battles uh let us know what you guys think of this story of the nba hard cap potentially coming to the nba let us know in the comment section down below